It's a shank. And then it's actually so far at the heel that you don't even touch uh, the grooves anymore. Yes, the swing plane has a big effect of the shank. This is why the shank also happens to the best in the world. What are you doing? All right, guys, let's talk about the shank. The shank, I know it's such a, um, such a bad word, but you know, even the best players, they have shanks once in a while. And it's not a sickness, it is a, you know, it's just a thing what could happen. And what could happen, I'm just gonna explain to you right now. So finally, what's happening, you're catching the ball super, super far at the heel, right? And then it's actually so far at the heel that you don't even touch the grooves anymore, you're just at the heel. So in a logical way, first of all, you have to imagine the club is going certainly forward than it was, or further forward than it was in a dress. So you have to wonder, okay, what options, options do I have that actually the club is moving forward? So, option A, the easiest is of course, then you say, okay, I need to come more from over the top, which is absolutely correct. So if you're coming from over the top, well, the reason whatever, if you're turning too fast, you know, if you're coming from the back of your, of your um, backswing, if you're starting a turn right away, you can see the club is coming forward. And of course, the heel is coming more towards the ball. So yes, the swing plane has a big effect of the shank. So if you cannot imagine, if you really, are, if you're drilled to keep your arm long, then you're really having an issue because then normally the best effect would be to pull away the arm and then you bring your club face back to the club. But um, a lot of great players don't do that. This is why the shank also happens to the best in the world. The best thing is, if you're working on your swing plane, put either a ball or some kind of box or a club head cover whatsoever, just a little bit outside of your ball. And I'm just gonna show you, you should not catch that ball totally. So let's see, right? So I didn't touch that ball, so certainly as you can see, my club path was actually to the right now. So it's certainly not coming from the outside. So that's the easiest way to practice that. So this is point A. Then point B, why can a shank also happen? So you have to imagine you have kind of a circle around you. I always sh demonstrate that if you put your arms a little bit in a longer position and you turn to the back or to the right for me and turn to the left, you can see I could actually draw half of a circle around me. So this is your swing circle. You have that swing circle in your upright position. And of course, you have that swing circle also when you're bent. So I hear a lot that um, if I, listen to students, then they say, I think I need to swing more to the right. So, and then I see, or I watch them um, doing the practice swings that they're actually turning away, but the arms are getting disconnected to the right. If you do this, you wanna swing to the right, what are you doing? You're actually getting the club face away from you and the hosel towards the ball. So. Let's see, if I want to swing to the right, what's happening? It's a shank. But you also could see that my arms are getting, getting totally separated from my body. So this is certainly not a great thing to, to, to think. I need to swing to the right with my arms. Either your whole body needs to go to the right, because, but then you're going to hit the ball to the right as well, I tell you that. Um, but certainly not only the swing or your arms, you have to stay one with your circle, with your swing circle, right? So I'm just gonna demonstrate to you. The club goes towards the ball, but then it actually goes around you. If you watch the best players in the world, how far they're actually really going away to the left. You have to do that. And especially if you turn away to the left, you can see you're taking, a, taking the club with you. You're taking the hosel away from the ball. You're taking more the toe towards the ball, right? So think about it, about the circle. 
And you don't have to go necessarily to swinging to the right. If you actually forget to turn away, you know, if you're I'm just gonna demonstrate that, if, you try, if you're just staying like this, if you forget that you're actually turning away, the hosel is very close to it. I'm just gonna demonstrate that to you. If you are really, really just shifting and not turning, or if you're just stopping turning, You can see on my trackman here, I hope you can see that now, I caught it really far in the inside. But all I did, I just didn't continue finishing my swing to the left. You're turning to the right and you're turning to the left. And this is what you really have to do. And you cannot just all of a sudden stop your hip or your shoulder while you're swinging through, right? So now we have the last option when you are setting up towards the ball. You have a position for your hands, right? You can either, when you watch it and you can have an option of drawing some kind of golf app, whatever, you can draw a circle around your hands. So your hands are supposed to hit that circle again. So this space here needs to be open for your hands. So your hands are coming into that slot back in again. So if you have some kind of leg in the way, right? So if your knee is kicking forward, if you're staying on your right side too much, if you're really like this, you can see all of a sudden this leg is taking place or it's, it's taking all this, the, uh, the space away for your hands. So your hands don't have any other option than just going forward, right? And the but the issue is just because your leg or your knee is coming forward. Your knee is supposed to travel inside. Your foot is supposed to travel inside. Of course, it goes a little bit forward, but never outside your feet, right? So how can you practice that? You either can practice to have some kind of a um, shaft leaning in here. So when you're turning, you're not allowed to touch that, touch that shaft, but you also just can think that you're moving more sideways instead of front, right? So it's very easy to explain because if there's no space for your hands, where else can your hands go instead of just forward, right? So now you have all the options and it's been a few reasons why you can hit a shank. And I repeat myself when I say there's not always one reason or two there. In the golf swing, it's such a mechanical movement. There are so many reasons. And either those I'm telling you are not all of them, right? So. Take those, maybe there's one, if you're having an issue of the shank, maybe there's one you can see yourself doing and um, just try to solve it this way. So if you have any questions, just let me know. I'm ready for your questions. And now I wish you good luck, get rid of the shank and have fun practicing. <laughs>